Hey everyone, Kelly Donahue Pirro here for your mashup of this week's videos where we mastered St. Patrick's Day and I did the first thing that I was hoping I wouldn't have to do. I had a pretty good streak where I was in a good rhythm of shooting the videos every day. But this week when I was shooting them, I was on the road and I got a little jammed up um, with some travel times, things like that. So you did see the same outfit a few days in a row. Um, I'm wearing it right now. So you can tell where we fell off the wagon. Um, but the good news is, is that we're still committed to delivering great video content for you and your agencies, because I strongly believe that the more we can pump into po agencies positivity, motivation, and just the right content and the right messaging, the more we're all going to perform. So I'm happy to be here with you for these four performance videos that we've handcrafted just based on things I've bumped into into the world. I'd also love it if you took a moment, if you're listening to this on our podcast, the Ridiculously Amazing Agent podcast, you can download this every Friday, subscribe to our show and you'll get it in your podcast. Listen to it on your way to work. You don't have to always be seeing if I'm wearing the same outfit. If you're on the podcast, we'd love to hear you hit, you know, give us a five-star review or leave a comment. It means the world to us and helps more agencies get our, get our messages. If you're on YouTube also, like the video. We'd love to hear more from you. And if there's ever a topic that you're interested in, let us know. We'd love to cover it. It's uh, fun coming up with the topics, but we could all use a little help sometimes. So without further ado, let's dive into our videos and get started for your Friday's mashup of this week's content. So sales goals or quotas, uh, you know, this is very common when we come into agencies and launch sales training to a team that's not producers. So they're servicing and selling or their inbound team. And because we're coming in to do sales training, a lot of assumptions start floating around between, you know, am I gonna get a quota? I'm not, I don't want a quota, I'm not a salesperson. And a lot of that comes from mindset that's really something where we work to unwind over that six months. This is really why all of our trainings are six months is it takes some time to unwind some mindset sometimes. And that's okay, that's why we're here. But in this situation, we had an agency reach out to us and say, I was like, hey, how'd it go launching? Letting them know we're gonna do sales training. Um, and you know, the scuttle at the coffee maker was, I don't want a quota. And so knowing that we know people jump to the worst case scenarios. And that's why I shot this video to help clarify the difference between a sales goal and a quota. Because if your brain's jumping to worst case scenario, why? Why are we stressing ourselves out about something that's not true? Kind of take a deep breath and understand the difference in this video. Hi everyone. So today I want to talk about something really important. We actually talk about this during our Apex sales training. When we work with a client live on sales training, we always try to set some form of a sales goal and incentive. So some agencies have them, some don't. But universally, if an agency doesn't have a sales goal, something very important is going to happen. When we talk about it, dread drips off of people's faces. The post-meeting meeting, meeting, which we like to call the meeting after the meeting at the water cooler, coffee maker, or over text, or you know your agency's chat system is, can you believe we have a quota? And so today, I'm gonna to take a moment to talk about the difference between a quota and a goal. A quota is something that sales professionals have to say, this is the expectation. If we fall below it, you have a performance issue. A goal, on the other hand, is something saying, could we all work together, grow in the same direction, and take some time to try to hit a target? Think about it. If you're losing weight, you don't have a quota, you have a goal. And for many, 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 many agencies, in fact, the vast majority of agencies I know don't have a quota, they have a goal. So if you hear you're getting a goal, don't think quota. Quota is something that true sales professionals have to make sure that they're being profitable for the business. And they're very important to have as well. But a goal is far different than that. A goal is asking you to put your personal best in every day. Don't cut corners and see what you can achieve with the training we offer. So next time you hear goal, don't translate it to quota. Instead say, hey, this is about me hitting my personal best and I'm absolutely gonna work towards hitting that goal. So on our next video, you know, it's, a, it's something that is so common that I see in insurance sales and so easy to fix, but sometimes we don't. We jump into underwriting mode, not sales mode too often at the beginning of a sale. 
So someone calls in looking for a quote, we take out the ye old quote sheet and we don't bond, we don't ask sales questions like how many quotes have you gotten? Why are you shopping today? How can I help you? Do you have other policies with other agents? We become super order takers. And some of it's not our fault because maybe we've never been trained, but it's also not helping our agency grow. And so in this video, we sort of just structure, hey, what do you have to do up front to not just go ahead, take the quote sheet out and start rattling off questions that people could fill out online and maybe have a better experience? Changing our tune will change our tone, which changes our outcomes. And that's what we cover in this video of the sales questions we really should be asking. So we're not just quoting, we're selling insurance. Have you ever thought about when your sales process actually starts? Is it from the first moment that you connect with a new lead? Or is it once you give over pricing and you're trying to justify it? For all too many salespeople, we underwrite and then we try to become a salesperson. And we really wanna reverse that trend. It's important that we focus on selling from the first moment we interact, which means being impressive and presenting ourselves in a fashion where people are like, wow, I wanna work with them. All too often we fall into this trap that we are going to get stuck in, which is I'm gonna sell if I win on price. That's something we have to avoid at all costs. So you have to think about inserting sales questions before your underwriting questions. When we work with sales training with agents, we often ask them, do you use a quote sheet? Which in all honesty, if you've watched my videos is something I don't agree with, unless you're in coastal areas or you have a quoting team that's doing that for you. But for most of us, we should be doing direct entry into a rater or for small commercial or niche where we're only gonna go to one market right into the carrier website. For other things, we do need a quote sheet and that's understandable. But if we go ahead and we start at the top and we think to ourselves, let's set up our sale. There are some sales questions we should be asking, such as, why are you shopping today? And you know, everyone's gonna say price. So the rebuttal to that is other than price, what's, how are you going to select your final agent? When are you looking to make a decision? This helps you identify where they are in the process. Are there any other decision makers that should be involved in reviewing your options? And also too, kind of going through and saying, do you have any other insurance policies with other agents? You wanna go ahead up front and understand this lead, but you can only do that when you build rapport. And that means sharing a little bit about yourself in exchange to learn about the prospect. What this looks like is having a personal pitch, which many agents struggle with and we've documented throughout our three minute videos. But the bottom line is you wanna stick out and be memorable. If you tell me you have a dog, I'm going to talk about my dog and instantaneously you go to the top of my list. We still buy from people we know, like, and trust at the end of the day. And that's why it's your responsibility during a new sales process to become memorable. And you be a memorable when you connect with somebody. I can tell you by looking at hundreds of quote sheets across this fine country that almost no quote sheets, they, first of all, you want to get them all on one page for whatever reason, we have to have one page, one page, one page, one page. Don't really understand why one page is different than two, but more power to you. I, I don't understand it. I'd rather have the job done right than worry about the number of pages. Um, but we want one page. And so we miss out on all the rapport building sales questions. And we go into year, make, model, roof, trampoline, pit bulls. And honestly, that's a great way to have a sales detracting process, not a sales enablement process. Because remember, people don't know what we don't tell them, and that's on us, that's our responsibility. So let's make sure that we're asking sales questions, not just diving into underwriting questions and selling once we deliver the rate. It's a great way to be a used car salesman and give us all a bad name in sales. Have you had a moment to check out our agency process packs yet? Well, let me tell you, they're full of such great stuff. First of all, they all include how-to videos. So not long, but five minutes that'll help walk you through each process. How great to train your team. Next, they all include a workbook with clear steps on how to tackle a process. The one that we wanna help you with right now is how to set goals for every role in your agency. So often we get questions of, well, how do we set a goal for a service person? How do we set a sales goal? How do we set a goal for the non-customer facing team? We wanna include them. 
Well, we're gonna help you with a full calculator that backs you in to what your agency wants to accomplish. We shouldn't be picking goals out of a hat. It should instead be, I wanna be X and my retention is Y, and this is what we need to do. We're very clear in our process pack, plaque, ugh, <laughs> our process pack, say that 10 times fast, that not only do you need a goal, but then you need a plan. And once you're clear on where you wanna be, you can create that plan. So head over to our shop, look at the agency process packs. We have several in there for your viewing enjoyment and you buy them outright. This one happens to be $200, then you have it forever and ever and ever, and you have access to the videos forever. So what are you waiting for? If your agency is struggling with processes, don't recreate the wheel, let us help you. And you can buy it at your leisure. We hope to see you in our, as an agency process pack client. And if you have any processes that you don't see there, keep checking, they might be in production or send us a message. We're always looking to add to the process packs. Have a great day. So in full transparency, this next video is something I personally struggle with. I tend to be overly gracious in gratitude when it's an extraordinary act, but the day-to-day -day stuff I tend to neglect and excuses all day long on the road, this, that, putting out fires. Um, I have to understand everybody's not like me. I, I personally don't need a lot of thank yous, but you know what, when somebody says it, it makes me feel amazing. And so, Intentionally, I have to look for the good things that people are doing every single day in my organization and really help bring those to light. Because it's so easy to get into firefighting mode and forget that there's some good stuff going on here. So for agents that struggle with this and leaders that struggle with this, I wanna give you the tips that I try to practice every day and really understanding that the biggest thing I can do to boost performance in my business is to say thank you, is to make people feel special and recognize their hard work even when the building's burning down. So I've taken this on as a personal mission and I'm a work in progress too. But if we all do it together, I think we'll see a lot better performance from our team. Hi, Agent. One of the things we wanna talk about is how do you boost your teams in performance? And this is something I think as owners, leaders, we all struggle with. We want the best for our teams, but so many times there's so many little riffles and ruffles that get in between our relationships. One of the things that we know is that when you go ahead and you show gratitude, your team blossoms. But it's so hard, right? All day long, you're putting out fires left and right from things and mistakes, and it can cloud our judgment on being able to show gratitude. The things that you often have to focus on are not pleasant. And for most insurance agents, they're not so boastful or prideful to come in and tell you all the good things they did all day. So they get hidden in the mud. But there's ways we can blast through this. We have to remember that showing gratitude is first, very inexpensive and works. Almost all insurance agents are fueled by recognition. Yes, a little money and some other things, but as humans, we love to be recognized for doing the right thing. So you have to make recognition and intention in your agency. It's not just something that you can do here and there. It's something you have to make a commitment to. We recommend if you're struggling with it, actually putting aside time. So there are things in the world, just gratitude journals, which help you in your personal life stay focused on the important things. Why not have a gratitude journal at your desk at work? Write things down, but then also go tell the person. By the way, this can expend well outside the agency. You can thank your barista, you can thank your personal trainer. Sometimes one little sign of gratitude goes a very, very long way. But for most of us, we have very high standards and that's what's made us successful. So it's not a bad, but it might be the smallest thing that helps someone along to get to be a high performer. So don't discredit the two words of thank you and making them sincere. Too many agency owners I talk to say, oh, I say thanks, I say thanks. I'm like, that's great. When I check out of a grocery store, they say thanks. But stopping and really saying, I know you've been a loyal customer for two years is really important. It's the same thing with your team. So stop be intentional, be thoughtful, and be consistent because it's the number one thing that will drive your agency's performance on your team. And yet sometimes it's the hardest thing to do. Team members watching this, you can also have a two-way street here. Don't be shy about thanking your leaders and managers who are working hard to help you. And it's been trying times with the COVID. No one's perfect and no one gave anybody a playbook. So they're not perfect either. Sometimes just a big thank you goes a long way to reinflate your manager who might be feeling a little defeated too. 
We can all use a little bit more gratitude in today's world. And it all starts with us. We don't have to wait to have someone show us appreciation to give it. So let's start a little forward thinking gratitude, pay it forward, and let's see how many thank yous we can get in your agency today. So next up, we have listening to listen. Um, something, again, my two videos in the same red jacket, <laughs> maybe prove a point, but um, listening to listen is something that is so critical. And in my head, I know it, but in my mouth, sometimes I struggle to shut it. <laughs> and so I've really tried to practice having a process for listening to listen. When people that I'm close with, either team members or even personally, all right, we are not on the same page. I want to convince somebody about how right I am. And I've, as you know, almost 40 years old now, have learned the hard way many times over, being right is not the outcome I'm looking for. I want to solve the problem and being right tends to push the problem farther back from solution. And that's not great. So what do we need to do to change that? Listening to listen involves patience. It involves understanding that the other person probably wants to be heard. And many times it involves you being the bigger person. And so taking notes and just listening to listen, don't have an expectation when dealing with conflict in an agency, that you're gonna solve it right there. Most times it didn't get started that day and it's gonna keep going on. It might not get fixed that day either. So when you're listening to listen, you allow the person to then get it off their chest and then become rational about how together collectively you can solve challenges. And if we can do this, we can make sure at the end of the day that you're getting the outcome. You're not just winning a little battle here and there because over time that's exhausting, number one, and you're gonna keep coming back to that same problem. So watch our video on listening to listen. Hi, agent. Sometimes in agencies, there's a lot of pent up frustration and it can become volcanic. In many agency assessments I get to work with, we see this, unfortunately. Missed expectations, um, perceptions that aren't reality, all sorts of things. And especially if you're dealing with multiple locations and the communication and direct contact just isn't there, these can often get worse. So one of the best tips I was ever given is sometimes we all just need to listen to listen. Not defend ourselves, not correct people, not do anything, but just listen to listen. Because for so many of us, that's what we're really truly looking for, which is to be heard. And getting it off of our chest and understanding the other person is listening can be very, very, very therapeutic. Not only is it therapeutic, but it's also the biggest leap in the right direction. So as a leader or a team member who's trying to work through a problem internally in an agency, are we focused on winning that fight or are we focused on the outcome? For many of us, we want the outcome of a better working relationship, a smoother working relationship, less stress, less strife. And so if we're listening to respond, we're listening to defend ourselves. We're not listening to get through the problem. If we're listening to listen, you take active notes, <clears throat> you don't respond. When something you feel gets you a little twisted and you're like, oh, that's not what happened. And you wanna defend yourself, simply say, tell me more and let the person walk through it. Their perception is their version of reality. For so many of us, we like to rush through things and put up our fists and say, we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you how this all worked. That's not what happened. This is what happened. But stop, listen to listen, and then use time on your side. Problems in agencies probably didn't arise overnight and they're not gonna get fixed overnight. So there's nothing wrong with taking a breather and then coming back to it tomorrow when cooler heads can prevail and the other person might be willing to listen. Yes, this may take you being the bigger person, but when we get to the right outcome and we can move on from strife in an agency, that's the true test. So if you're facing conflict, I encourage everybody to take a moment and listen to listen. Don't listen to have an answer on that meeting. Don't listen to respond. Take notes, digest, breathe. If you start to get stressed, tell me more because that's a great way of not responding, but saying, I don't understand, or can you, you know, to clarify for me, but tell me more is just a really great, great, great way to do it. <laughs> so ask yourself next time you're getting into a employee review, disciplinary hearing, or confronting a problem of listening to listen, and you might pick up some really key strategies that aren't about defending yourself, 
but are more about understanding your steps that you need to take to get to the ultimate job, which is the outcome, not winning one fight. So next step that we have is wrapping all this up together. What a week, what a week, you know, we're in March. And the big thing that I want to display to everybody is we're all works in progress. And the best thing that we can do is keep challenging ourselves and keep pushing our teams out of their comfort zone a little bit, not necessarily upsetting the apple cart, but the reality of the situation is, is that nobody's perfect and expectations are high today. So how can we meet those expectations, but also clearly deliver them in a way that says, here's our plan and have grace when we're not perfect, but keep working on it because just saying, hey, it's, I'm not good at it is not the strategy that you wanna take on. I had a conversation this week with an agency where the, the agent kept telling me, I'm not a techie person, I'm not a computer person, I'm not a computer person. And you know, he was, he was in the back nine of his career and he's, he's got a lot of knowledge and a great guy and he's really struggling on getting on board with technology. <clears throat> and I simply said to him, you know, the more you tell yourself you're not a technology person, the more you definitely won't be a technology person. He was like, what do you mean by that? I said, if I tell myself I'm not a bikini model, I'll never be a bikini model. I told myself growing up, I'm not good at math. I'm not good at math. And guess what? I was always not putting myself in situations to get better at math. But you know, the reality is, is that we all need to stop and take a deep breath and say, we're all unique and special, but just because we're not good at something doesn't mean we can't learn. You know, my 92 year old grandmother has an iPad that plays bingo on it and orders on Amazon. She's not a computer person but she's learned, she's kept an open mind on things and that's really where we need to be. So I wanna leave you with that message of what's the label you're giving yourself that maybe you need to take off and say, am I using that as an excuse to not get better at the things I know are gonna make a difference? And on that note, I'll leave you and we'll see you next week with more videos. And if you like this, again, share the podcast around or the videos. We'd love to pick up some new subscribers, followers and get your feedback. Have a great week, everybody. Is training your insurance team on your mind? If not, it should be. Your team is your largest investment of the agency. And when they aren't trained with the best practices, you're not exactly leading the team the way you should be. Training can be difficult, right? Sometimes people aren't bought in. There's never enough time and it can be costly. But we've solved that problem here at Agency Performance Partners. We have an online school with sales training, retention training, time management training, how to turn inbound calls into opportunities, and how to reduce remarketing. And we're adding a new course every single quarter. This can be done on your own time and the videos are generally under 10 minutes. There's workbooks, role-playing videos, scripts. It's super interactive. For many agencies, they pop the video on during their team meeting and then use the discussion questions in the workbook. So you can take your team meetings to the next level. Oh, and did we mention cost? It's only $245 a month. And what that means is your team gets access to the subscription of training and all the trainings we add. Or if you prefer, we have some trainings you can buy outright. But not training your team, there's no excuse. Because now we have a solution to an industry-wide problem. You can hop onto our website and look for the agency performance pack. And that will get you there so that that way you can go ahead and start training your team. You can get your subscription right on our website and get access to the courses immediately. Each one even includes a manager section and many of them include setup guides with AMS 360, Hawksoft, QQ Solutions, and Applied Epic. We're consistently updating those training guides as well. So what's the excuse now? Just go over to our website, get started today. Any questions, let us know, we're happy to help. But an untrained team is costing you, your clients, time, money, energy, and stifling your growth. So let's tackle that this quarter, let's get it going. Hopefully we'll be welcoming you as a new student in our school.